Well, you can call it a sixth sense, a hunch, a feeling or a vibe, whatever you call it. We tend to use intuition in our everyday lives without sometimes even being aware of it. Our next guest has spent the last decade studying the science behind our gut feeling and says we can tap on this to make better life decisions. Now, his new book, The Intuition Toolkit, provides guidance on how to hone and listen to our inner voice. I have a hunch this is going to be an interesting interview. <laughs> Joining us now is psychologist and neuroscientist Dr. Joel Pearson. Uh, thank you so much for coming in and chatting with us. My pleasure, yeah. I found your book absolutely fascinating because there are times in my own life where I, go, I hear my inner voice and I go, hmm, I don't know whether I should or not. Uh, and you talk about it in your book as well, when to actually trust your intuition. Yeah. So when when could you? So, so first up, it's a real thing, right? So people have heard about it, there's this mysterious sixth sense, this magical thing. But we can understand it and measure it now with all the science we already have. Mm. So yeah, I'm a scientist, I'm not sort of mystical or anything <laughs> like that. So let's just get that cleared up. Um, yeah, so the second half of the book is really how to trust our intuition, how to optimise it, how to use it in our daily practice. Right, and there's five rules I go through in the book based on science. Yeah. yeah. How do you break it down? How do you study intuition? Because a lot of the times it's difficult to explain. You know, there are times I find myself saying, mm, I have a feeling or yeah. my gut instinct is to... How do you break that down into scientific matter? Yeah, so that's so my lab's on this mission to measure things like that, to measure things in the mind, bring it down. I often use the phrase like blood test for the mind or a microscope for the mind, right? We need tools to measure these things. So almost a decade ago, we developed sort of the first objective, reliable measurement in the lab for intuition. We showed it's a real thing. We showed we can measure it in anyone, anytime. Um, I won't go into the details, they're pretty nerdy, but, but we, we can do it in the lab. We get, sort of, we get unconscious information into the brain yeah. and we can measure how good people are at using that to make better decisions. Um, and now, sometimes though, intuition does fail us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and, but you did mention that in the book you set out you know, these five rules yeah. of how to hone and how to trust your intuition. Give us an example. Yeah, so, so the first one really, so I use this acronym SMILE in the book and that's sort of a way to remember the, the five rules. And the first one is self-awareness. So it's really, bring, if you're emotional, if you're stressed, if you're anxious, just don't use intuition, right? So intuition is tapping in to these internal feelings in the body. And if you're stressed, depressed or anxious, you're just not going to be able to feel those things. You know, the noise of this strong emotion is going to wash it away. So that's the sort of the first rule. Don't practice intuition if you are overly emotional bring your state back down again, okay. right? So that's sort of the first thing. So yep. second one is mastery, and this is a really important one, M for mastery. If you've never played tennis before, you know, don't go out and try and be an intuitive tennis player. Learn the basics, get a coach, then later on, once you have experience, yeah. bring in the intuition, right? So if, and if, you know, if you don't follow these rules, then you're opening yourself up to what I call misintuition, like a misfiring of intuition. And that's really the secret to intuition. It's not black and white. It's not good or bad. It's both. It just depends on when and how. So just on that, you're yeah. actually tapping into previous experiences yeah, or previous absolutely. knowledge. Is that, is that what intuition is? Yeah, so it's based on prior learning. That's why the experience and mastery is so important. Yeah. So let's say the hundred other times you've been in the studio, your brain has linked all the different cues, the temperature, the lights, how stressed the staff might be with good or bad outcomes, right? And so when you're in that moment, your brain's linking those things and it's triggering feelings in your body. Your heart rate will go up. You might sweat that tiny bit more. Yeah and you're feeling that. And so it's all unconscious, but you feel that information. So your feelings are tapping into the unconscious. You've gone through the two, two out of five of the, of the uh, yeah. kids. So uh, we won't give away the others. We won't give <laughs> stay away tuned. the others. Yeah, stay tuned. Buy the book. Um, but I do need to ask yeah. you though, you come from a science background. Yeah. You have a scientific mind. Do you use intuition or, or do you use more of your scientific brain? I use both. And that's really, you can use both, they're not exclusive. Mm -hmm. So I use intuition every day, whether I'm going for a run in the morning, where to put my feet when I'm running through the bush, uh, or reading a scientific paper, or deciding which direction my lab should go in for new research, looking at the data. Yeah, I'll use my intuition. I've honed it over years in these specific fields, so I know I can trust it for these specific, specific things, right? As long as I follow the five rules, I'm not too emotional, 
right? I'm in a familiar context. Mm. That's a sneak peek at the E at the end of the smile. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do indeed. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, Dr. Joel Pearson, it's great having you in the studio. Thank you so much for coming in. My pleasure. Thank you.